So Jesus uses important salvation terminology here. He uses the word saved, okay? And this is no indication that this is a physical salvation only. Uh, that You know, there seems to be uh, an eternal life thing here. And he mentions life. And although he doesn't yet state that it's eternal life, this will be clarified later in the chapter in, in verse 28. And, and John has grouped these things together in his gospel, okay? We saw in John 3 that being saved from the condemnation is synonymous with having eternal life. So salvation and having eternal life, we, we can use those ch terms interchangeably, okay? Because they, they, they lock together. So we clearly see that eternal life and, and salvation is the specific context of this passage. It is the subject matter of what Jesus is talking about. And I just make a point of saying that because when I've confronted somebody about this chapter before as a proof text to, to one saved, always saved, they'll say, well, you're taking this chapter out of context, you know, but, but that salvation is the context. Eternal life is the context of this chapter. Okay. So it's important when we understand that when Jesus is speaking specifically about eternal life and salvation and when he isn't, because if you don't know how to make this distinction, opposition can make can use scripture against you if, if you're not familiar with it with how to defend it. So one person might say this guy on the left, he might say, well, look, all throughout John's gospel, Jesus repeatedly says, believe on me have everlasting life. And if you've been following me in this study, we, we've seen that multiple times now. Okay, we've really drilled in this point. Um, and then, so someone on the opposite side might say, well, he does actually go on to say, go and sin no more. And if you love me, keep my commandments in John's gospel as well. Okay, so, you know, it's not as if Jesus said those things in a different gospel. So, you know, we can't just say, well, in John's gospel, Jesus said, believe on me. Well, no, because he also said, go and sin no more. And so, you know, what what's really going on there? Um, this guy will also say, well, we have eternal security because in John 10, Jesus said, I give unto them eternal life and no man shall ever pluck them out of my hand, right? Well, that, again, this is the, the proof text that we would bring for eternal security. But then someone who believes in conditional security, again, if we're still arguing from the Gospel of John, would say that Jesus also warned in John 15 that if a branch does not abide in me, he is cut off and, and men cast it into the fire. Now, we have already explained this to some extent in our study of John chapter 6 earlier in this series. And so really, you know, this will, will complement a lot of what we've seen in, in John chapter 6. But it, do, it does give us a new angle to look from because we've got the sheep and the shepherd uh, analogy to help us understand this this more. OK, so first of all, no, these passages here like believe on me have everlasting life and I give on to them eternal life and they shall never perish. These are passages that are demonstrably talking about eternal life. Eternal life is the subject of those verses. Whereas on the other hand, these passages like where he said, go and sin no more, and if you love me, keep my commandments, and if a branch does not abide in me. Well, it's not really very obvious that eternal life is the specific subject matter of those passages. So if you're going to try and use those passages to override these passages, well, then we've got a problem because we know that these are dealing with everlasting life. Whereas these, we can't really say that so much. I mean, where Jesus said, go and sin no more or sin no more, he said that in John 5, he said it in John 8. But in both of those dialogues with the people that he said that to, he never mentioned eternal life. He never mentioned believing on him. So go and sin no more is, is not really an everlasting life salvation instruction it, it doesn't belong with believe on me it's not believe on me plus uh, you know go and sin no more for everlasting life it's believe on me for everlasting life and on a different topic of conversation not about eternal life hey go and sin no more so that worse things don't come upon you okay and likewise, if you love me, keep my commandments. Um, that well, that one really, and also abide in me. That that does need its own detailed studying because that's just a few chapters from now. It, it will hopefully get its own study in just a few episodes of this series. But again, it, Jesus talking to his disciples is not telling unsaved people how to be saved. So it's not obvious that they're actually eternal life instructions. Okay. Now, uh, so you know, just to summarise this. So John ten twenty eight, I give unto them eternal life. We've got it in the verse. It's talking about eternal life. John 3.16, uh, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Again, we've got those words there. We've got salvation terminology. Whereas when Jesus said, abide in me, or he is cast forth, or go and sin no more, again, you can see that eternal life or everlasting life is not mentioned there. Now, obviously, I've, I've only quoted those verses. I've not quoted the passages. But, you know, in context, they're not necessarily eternal 
external life instructions. And, and that's where people often get a bit mixed up and that's why they get mixed up into work salvation because they don't discern between what is for eternal life and what isn't necessarily okay. 